now we are walking towards the holy site, the holy maqam of the holy prophets and the messengers and the pure souls that came to this mosque and resided in this mosque. Like I said before, we will continue our journey. We will continue our journey in this holy mosque and we will narrate another merit, another fadila, another beautiful hadith from our holy infallible imams, peace be upon them. And we will also continue the hadith of Ibrahim ibn Hashim Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi. Let us continue now. I stand in the far corner in the mosque. We walked from the Maqam Ibrahim alayhi salam straight forward towards the Maqam here of the Holy Prophets, the pure souls, and the messengers. This Maqam as well is called by the Maqam of Salih alayhi salam. But it has been narrated, of course, as the hadith you'll see, I made claims. I made claims. So what I will do is I will back up my claims. I claimed what? That the prophets and messengers prayed here. I claimed that this mosque has a beautiful sanctity. I also said other claims. Now, inshallah, what I will do is narrate you some traditions to prove my claims. I will give you evidence from the holy household. Peace be upon them. Now, the first, or sorry, the second report, as well narrated in the Bihar of Al Allam Al Majlisi. Now, for my dear viewer, I suggest that you open Bihar Al Anwar, volume 97, and you go to the Bab, the chapter in which it talks about Fadail of Masjid Al Sahla. You will find these traditions. Here, of course, they are in English. You can only find them online most of the time in Arabic. I translated these traditions for my dear viewers so that they may have a better understanding, so that they may have closeness to this mosque, so they can be more close in proximity when they come to this mosque because everything that a believer performs is ala qadr al ma'rifa. Everything a believer performs is measured by his understanding of the place or the person. So again, from the Bihar of al Allam al Majlisi Radwan Allah Ta'ala Alayhi, from Qasas al Anbiya, he narrates this with the recorded chain of transmission on Ammar al Yaqban. Listen to the words of Ammar. We're going to paint to you a small picture. He says, we were with Abu Abdullah Ja'far ibn Muhammad as sadiq peace be upon him. And amongst the group was a man by the name of Abban ibn Nu'man. So picture this man, picture Abu Abdullah sadiq peace be upon him, and then picture a group of people. And this narrator is telling us that there is a man by the name of Abban ibn Nu'man. The Imam said, now pay very close attention to the words of the Imam, peace be upon him. He said, do any of you in this circle, in this gathering, have knowledge of my uncle Zayd ibn Ali al-Shaheed? Abban said, I have knowledge of him, my master. The Imam told him, the Imam told him, Oh Abban, what knowledge do you have? Please inform me of the knowledge that you have of my uncle Zayd. Abban said, We were with him one night, and he said to us, My brothers, my companions, have you been to the mosque of Al Sahla? Have you been to Masjid Al Sahla? We said, No. Abu Abdullah alayhi salam asked, he said, what happened after? Abban said, We then departed with him until we reached the Holy Mosque, the Holy Grand Mosque of Al Sahla, and we found him very diligent and careful in his prayer. Now, I want you to pay attention to the words of Abi Abdullah Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq, peace be upon him. He says, This mosque used to be the house of Prophet Abraham. From here, 
he began his march towards the giants. As I said back at the maqam of Ibrahim السلام, that here used to be the house of Ibrahim, peace be upon him, Abraham, the Prophet, Khalilullah Ibrahim السلام, And from here he would march towards the giants in Yemen. Then he says, it was also the house of Prophet Idris in which here in this mosque, Prophet Idris would do his tailoring. Then he says, in this mosque is a green stone. This green stone has the characteristics or in another translation you can say it has the image of every single Prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glorified be he sent to this earth. The Imam alayhi salam says, in this mosque is the place of Al Khidr alayhi salam. Insha'Allah, we will soon go to the maqam of Al Khidr alayhi salam and you will see more about Al Khidr and about his, his remnants that he left in this mosque, his footsteps that he also has left in this mosque. The Imam alayhi salam concluded, this is the narrator saying, the Imam alayhi salam concluded by saying, he said, if my uncle, listen, these are very important words. These words, when you enter the mosque, you will notice there's two doors we entered, right? Right in the middle, what do you see? You notice a hadith by Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad and Sadiq And the madmoon of that hadith is this hadith here. It says, if my uncle Zayd came to the mosque when he had departed and prayed in the mosque, and supplicated to Allah, Allah would give him the reward of 20 years. Listen, O oh believer. Listen to me, O oh Shia of Al Muhammad. When you believe, when the believer comes to this mosque and prays and supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sincere dua and seeks refuge in Allah, in his Prophet, in his messengers, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him for 20 years. He said, if my, if my uncle Zayd would have prayed in this mosque between the two prayers, you will see that the a'mal, the religious duties and supplications for this mosque is written to be done between the two maghribs, between maghrib and isha, you pray the nafila, the two units of prayer, and that is when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sincere heart of your hajat, of your request. He says, if my uncle Zayd would have done this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have removed all affliction away from him. We finished narrating a second report by Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him. Now, as promised, we will continue the hadith of Ibrahim ibn Hashim. So, we read in the beginning what happened. What happened now? Let us get to the Nas. So, Ibrahim ibn Hashim said, we saw him pray. After he was finished his prayer, he left to a different zawiya, a different corner in the mosque. He says, he began supplicating a beautiful dua. He said, O oh Allah, by the right of these honored grounds, by the right of those who worshipped here, you know my request, hence, hence send peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy progeny والسلام, and answer, Ya Allah, my haja, my request. Forgive my wrongdoings and send peace and blessings upon Muhammad and Al-Muhammad. Here, this person who we still do not know who he is and I will not ruin the surprise for you. He is teaching us, he is raising us that this is how you do dua that you ask Allah and you send peace upon, peace and blessings upon Muhammad and Al-Muhammad. You ask Allah, you send peace and blessings upon Muhammad and Al-Muhammad and you do tawassul by the right of Muhammad and Al-Muhammad. Then he says, O oh Allah, keep me alive as long as you know that life will be good. O oh Allah, take my life if you see good in taking it. Keep me in a state of love towards your friends and loved ones and in a state of enmity towards your enemies. Listen to this, Aqeedah, Aqeedah. We are extracting from this dua the beliefs of the Shia, doctrine of the Shia, which is what Al-Wulaya and Al-Bara'a extracted from this beautiful dua. It says, O oh Allah, deal with me in a manner which befits you, O oh merciful, O oh compassionate. This is the nas of the dua. 
Ibrahim ibn Hashim said, we went to this man and we asked him, we said, whose sight is this? And the man responded saying, it is the sight of Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, which is the sight that we just visited down at the far corner of the mosque. This is the words and the dua of Ibrahim al-Khalil. Ibrahim Khalil Allah, Prophet Abraham sat here and this is the dua of Prophet Abraham. And Prophet Abraham gave this in his gave this as a will and we inherit it till today. Till today we sit and we recite this beautiful dua and we ask Allah by the right of Muhammad and I Muhammad, just like Adam alayhi salam in Masjid al-Kufa, ask Allah by the right of Muhammad, Ali, Fatim, and Hassan and Hussein. Today we also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the right of these five. So this man answered. He said, this site here is the house of Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. Then he moved to a different corner in the mosque and he also began to pray and supplicate. He ended his supplication. Then he moved to a different corner of the mosque and inshallah we will continue the hadith. And before we do that, and before we move to the next corner of the mosque, we will recite the holy dua that is specifically made, the holy dua that is specifically narrated for this holy maqam of the prophets and the messengers and the pure souls that came to this holy masjid. Now we recite the holy dua in the supplication of the holy prophets and messengers and pure souls. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma ni as'aluka bi asma'ika ya Allah wa anta salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa anta wa anta ja'al khayra umri akhirahu wa khayra a'mali khawatimha wa khayra ayami yawm alqaqa fi innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir Allahumma taqabbal du'a'i wa asma' najwa'i Ya Aliyu, Ya Azimu, Ya Qadiru, Ya Qahir, Ya Hayyu, Ya Yamut, Salli ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad, Waghfir li al-dhanub al-lati bayni wa baynaka, Wa la tafdahni ala rasa al-shuhada, Wa hrusni bi'aynuka al-lati la tunam, Wa arhamni bi-qudratika alayya ya arhamar rahameen, Wa salli allahu ala Muhammadin, وآله الطيبين الطاهرين